Hello and welcome back to Sigma TV. I'm Yannick Collins. Today I'm joined by our return guest, Alidad Tosh. He is the Managing Director at 28 Limited, a Hong Kong-based consultancy specializing in international casinos and integrated resorts. So Alidad, great to have you back. Great to be back. And you did a very interesting panel in Sigma Europe's virtual expo and on the subject, will Europe embrace integrated resorts? Now, would you please care to provide a summary for that? Um, I'll try to condense a 20 minute discussion into two minutes. Um, it was a great panel moderated by Annie Ciara, um, as well as uh, my co-panelist was Andrew Tottenham, um, an integrated resort specialist uh, around the world. Um, the first half of the panel, we discussed the history of uh, integrated resorts, how they originated from the Las Vegas, um, and how they moved to uh, Asia in the early 2000s at Venetian Macau and later on at Marie Bay, Marina Bay Sands and how it was the model through which a lot of other people are trying to replicate. Um, after basically establishing their success in Las Vegas and Asia, we just uh, talked about in the second half of the panel about why Europe with hundreds of years of history of gaming um, and perhaps a thousand plus casinos, why doesn't it have an IR yet? Um, just to note, there are a couple of IRs coming on board in Cyprus uh, and another one in uh, Greece, Athens, Greece, uh, over the next few years. But we discuss whether or not they will be successful and whether or not Europe does have the capacity to embrace even more IRs. And the conclusion was that yes, depending on where they're located, uh, there will definitely be a place for more IRs, integrated resorts uh, in the future of Europe. All right, thank you. And to our viewers, we'll make sure to link that panel in the notes section of this video. Now, Alda, just to give our viewers a context, could you first define to us an integrated resort? It's a tricky one. Um, integrated resort, defining um, something like an IR is defining someone like being rich. It's difficult because my perception of who's rich is very different than yours and anybody else's. Whereas the world millionaire or billionaire is much more subjective. You have the units and you can go measure whether you're talking about cash or, or whatever, it's quantifiable. Integrated resorts are not, and that makes it somewhat difficult. I tend to be much more strict in terms of my definition in that beyond the traditional casino, hotel, and restaurant outlets, which has been going on for literally hundreds of years uh, that's been around, an IR has to contain not just a, those three, casino, hotel, and restaurant, but also something above and beyond that a huge attractive theme park, perhaps amazing entertainment and or great shopping experience, the likes of which are not found that much in the city that they're located in. Uh, perhaps they can go and add conventions and meetings, exhibition uh, places, which again, it's gotta be um, large enough to actually go ahead and gather people in one complex. So the whole integrated resort is it's gotta be one complex that houses a variety of these together brings all these people simultaneously together. But my definition goes beyond those and actually says that it's got to be iconic and it's got to be packed full of people. Uh, it just can't be some beautiful building somewhere in the middle of nowhere with very few people coming in there. To be a true integrated resort, it has to have the crowds and it has to be iconic. All right. And you mentioned the success of integrated resorts in Asia. Now, I'd like to delve deeper into that, if you don't mind kicking up. What are some of the examples of successful IRs in Asia? Well, perhaps the original uh, IR in Macau, Venetian Macau, 2007. I was lucky enough to be on the opening team. Um, it was truly iconic. It was the first of 10 casinos that came on board later in the Kotai area. That's the land that was used to be water. Uh, and uh, is now these huge buildings. It was, at the time it was open, it was the second largest building in the world in terms of footprint. Um, it had 850 gaming tables. A typical Las Vegas casino has 150 to 200, 250. They had 850, it had 3,000 plus hotel rooms. It had, sorry, sorry 3,000 plus um, slot machines, 3,000 hotel rooms, a huge mall, uh, amazing exhibition, um, meetings and exhibition, by far the largest in Macau. It was a sight to behold, and it was embraced by anywhere from 60, 70,000 people on a midday to in excess of $100,000, uh, that thousand people uh, midweek. 
it was packed and it has been packed since then. That's a typical example in Macau. The other one uh, is Marina Bay Sands, opening same owner um, three years later in 2010. Marina Bay Sands opened up in Singapore. It is still one of the most successful casinos in the world. But above that, it's, it is truly an iconic uh, feature. It is difficult to see many pictures of Singapore without seeing a picture of Marina Bay Sands somewhere, either as a center of the picture or uh, somewhere in the background. It is truly iconic. And so far, it's been going like gangbusters. And it is attracting crowds. People actually go to Macau and go to Singapore to make sure that this is one of the items that they actually see. So I consider those truly integrated resorts um, that are very, um, you know, different than the typical wannabe IRs. A lot of people nowadays claim that their casino attached to a hotel, attached to a restaurant is an IR. In my definition, that is not the case. It's gotta be something above and beyond those. Interesting. So you're saying some of the IRs aren't really IRs. Can you shed a light on this? Yes. Um, people like to consider something an integrated resort. Having, let's take a typical example. One of the most beautiful casinos I've ever seen is Wind Palace in Macau. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's got a large casino. It's got, you know, something like 16 to 1800 hotel rooms. It's got beautiful restaurants and some shopping. But it's not an integrated resort. It's not bustling with tons and tons of tourists. It is not catered to go ahead and appeal to the masses, perhaps by design. It is just super high end. It is a beautiful resort, a beautiful casino, but it's not an integrated resort. So to me, that is a typical example of something beautiful. I'm not even sure whether or not they claim to be an integrated resort. But I do realize that there's other properties up and down Kotai Strip, even Las Vegas Strip, um, that they claim to be integrated resorts but they don't bring in the crowds the way that they're supposed to, to be able to do this. A lot of people places claim that they have meetings and convention facilities, but that's just one floor in a hotel room. Uh, in, in a, in a, that's one uh, hotel floor. That's not impressive enough and that's been going on for quite some time. It's not going above and beyond and bringing those people. So in those definitions, yeah, there's quite a lot of those things that I consider them IR pretenders more than anything else. All right, but so with those, must have components of an IR that you just mentioned. Using your definition, where are the true IRs, say, in Macau? Well, again, uh, Venetian Macau, definitely. Galaxy is another example of Galaxy has more, something around 4,500 to 500 hotel rooms. It's got one of the largest casino, casino floor spaces in the world. It's got tons and tons of shopping. It's got dozens of restaurants. Um, that is definitely considered an integrated resort. It is attracting tens of thousands of people, much like Venetia. Those two are in a class by themselves. Then you've got, perhaps, you wanna to go to the next level, which is not quite an IR if you ask 100 experts, perhaps 80 of them will say so. COD, City of Dreams, would be considered another one, although again, it does have shopping, it does have some meeting areas, uh, it does have restaurants and hotel and casino, but does it necessarily have the same kind of crowd that the Venetian Galaxy do? Not necessarily. I put them third. Um, going a little bit further, um, perhaps Londoner, which is going to be the new reincarnation of uh, Sans Cortez Central, would be considered one. Maybe some of the other guys. But as you go further away from uh, Venetian and Galaxy, you become less and less a integrated resort with tens of thousands, and I'm talking about upper tens of thousands, you know, perhaps 100,000 people on select days. Um, to something about maybe about a half or a third of that. So that would be kind of on the borderline uh, in Macau. And how about the four properties in Manila which are claiming to be an IR? Are they real IRs or are they not? And how would you rank them? Well, let me chronologically discuss them. The first one that opened up was Resort World Manila. It is the most unimpressive, quote unquote, IR wannabe. It is basically a shopping mall, not even an attractive one. It's got a couple of uh, screens, a movie theater, nothing is special. The casino is nothing beautiful. The hotel rooms are not that good. Um, it's not an impressive property. So I don't, yeah, it does have, it does have the, probably the only uh, integrated, or sorry, in, 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 casino area that actually has a 
a uh, church, a, a chapel next to it, so you can sit in the casino and go outside and confess. I don't even know what that is doing there, but I don't consider that an IR. After that, Soler opened up. Absolutely by far the most elegant uh, casino in um, Manila. But it's just that. It's got a nice hotel room, beautiful hotel rooms, nice dining, and that's it. It doesn't have the throngs of people coming in there, and it doesn't attract... Yes, it does attract some international clientele, but a lot of the people there are just basically locals. So I consider Soler to be a very beautiful, perhaps the most attractive of these, um, these four casinos, large casinos. COD Manila would be probably one that's more well-rounded in, in that it's got shopping, it's got gaming, it's got some hotel rooms, but is it iconic enough to go and attract people to go and must see? No, not in the same class as Venetian Galaxy and Marina Bay Sands. And finally, Okada, it's just big. And unfortunately, it's big, but not so attractive. It's big casino, big hotel rooms, big fountain, but the finishing is not there, but it's not, desire, it's not what people desire. Um, it's not iconic. You don't have to go to Manila and check out Okada. And even if you do check it out, you're not really leaving that impre uh, quite impressed. So I think Soler is similar to Wind Palace, a beautiful. Great touch, still well-maintained, but not an IR, uh, neither are the other three. Now, how about Emerald Bay, which is the first integrated resort that is to be put up in Cebu? What do you think about that development? Um, I don't know much about Emerald Bay except what's been shown. The, the architectural rendering is beautiful, but I've seen many, many beautiful buildings in the world that look good when an architect draws it and the reality doesn't come out. That's one. So I... Love to see it. I'd like to see the real thing before I actually make a judgment. The second thing is, it's not located in its heart of a large metropolitan area. It doesn't have the crowds. I don't think it will be tens upon tens of thousands of people. I think it's a beautiful resort. I have no doubt it will be attractive in the casino side. It's got a beach right next to it. But I don't think it will have the momentum, the, the crowd size that in my subjective definition, is required for an IR. I, I would love to be proven wrong. I'd love to see it to be quite successful. I'd love to visit it. But uh, I don't think it would be anything else beyond a beautiful resort. And that's it, not an integrated resort with meeting its in conventions and those kind of facilities. Okay, well, considering its location next to a beautiful beach, wouldn't that be a plus? Um, not necessarily. Being next to a beach is not a good, uh, the whole idea of an integrated resort is that's where you want people to go there so they don't waste time going from one location to another location to another location. Shopping and the casino are always dying for your time. They're, they're vying, they're competing for your time. A beach is just another competitor. The last thing an IR wants to do is have its people come in there and spend four or five hours a day in a, in a beach where they cannot make nearly as much money. So. I'm not sure if that's going to make it special. I just think it's going to be beautiful. I think it's going to give it a lot more um, of pot potentially amenities that are out there. But I don't think that's going to necessarily make it an integrated resort. It's a different experience, but uh, I don't think in the end it's going to be that profitable. That's a very excellent point that you brought up there. So besides IR contenders and pretenders, there are obviously these standalone casinos. So will these casinos stand a chance once an IR opens nearby? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you can use uh, Las Vegas as a typical example. Back in 1989, when the first IR came, came around until the mid-90s, until late 90s, when all these additional integrated resorts came out, these large, large properties, many of the casinos, dozens of casinos, basically had to reinvent themselves or basically understand what, is, what works for them. There's two kinds of casinos, standalone casinos. Those located very immediately near the Las Vegas Strip, the Kotai, Kotai Strip, they have to basically find their own niche, find their own clientele, and specialize in them. It could be that you tend to be a little bit more low end. Uh, you, you target uh, slightly, again, uh, middle class or lower class by dropping your rates. Uh, typical example would be some casinos on the Strip and also downtown Las Vegas, which competes with the Strip in Las Vegas by saying, you come in here, you get more bang for your buck. You can spend, your dollar goes further. You can buy cheaper food, 
and you can get slightly friendlier service. So that's the kind of people, the things that standalone casinos can do in the centers of cities. But I lived in Las Vegas and there were a couple of casinos, local casinos in the surrounding, area, surrounding areas, which is where most residents are. Most people don't live on the strip, they live away from it. And the advantages they offered was they were small enough that they had friendlier staff and they knew everybody. I literally would go there once every couple of weeks, but people still knew who you were, said hello. It was a very friendly thing. That is one thing they can compete with because if you've got tens of thousands of gamblers going to a casino um, on a weekly basis in on the, these giant integrated resorts with, versus a very tiny one, that customer friendliness, how you doing, what's happening, how's your job, hunting, going, um, oh, good luck this time. That is something quite special. That that's makes a distinction between a local casino, which tends to be obviously the standalone ones, and these big giant IRs. Great. Well, moving on, we did a two-part series on Japan with you earlier, where this where you discussed the three potential IRs being introduced. So, my question: Why does the government emphasize an IR with minimal mention of a casino? Uh, because Singapore and Japan has a vocal, um, loud minority, which is opposed to gambling on moral basis. They don't like the idea of, again, not gaming to them, to them is gambling. They don't like the idea of the government making money off of people's gambling, that's one. And they're very concerned about locals, their own relatives, uh, becoming addicted to uh, gambling. As a result, the government has to do two things. Like in Singapore, uh, Japan has actually taken on and copied the model of Singapore in that they are uh, first and foremost preventing the locals from just freely walking into the casinos. A local in Singapore has to pay a fee to enter a casino. A local, that means a Japanese national in Japan, in the three IRs that are coming up, is going to have to pay a fee to just walk into a casino. And above and beyond that, and the fee is somewhere around 45 to $55, again, depending on the currency. Uh, US dollars, depending on the currency, is, that, is, is in yen. Um, the, the, um, there's also restrictions as to the number of times a week they can go visit a casino and the to number of times a month that they can go visit it. So this is to say, listen, don't worry about it. We're not going to let these people just walk in there for free. There's a cost associated with it. Above and beyond that, Singapore innovated something by saying that, you know, we recognize that this integrated resort is coming. These two integrated resorts are coming. Um, and you know what? We're only gonna give, allow them 5% of the real estate. 5% of the square footage is dedicated to the casino. The other 95% is going to be meetings, incentives, co conventions, exhibitions, it's called MICE, shopping. All these other non-gamings are there to be the center of activity for tourists as well as locals. Japan has taken it even further by making it 3% of the entire area can be de designated, uh, assigned to the casino, the other 97%. So the government simply basically distracts its local citizenry, which tend to hire these political, you know, these uh, politicians, by saying, don't pay attention to 3%. Yes, we know it's 3% and we're gonna tax it. But there's also the 97% that's going to provide thousands upon thousands of jobs and tax revenue and it's going to, you know, revitalize the local economy. Okay, so if you were to rank your top IRs worldwide, in your opinion, where would they be? Uh, I think Marina Bay Sands and Venetian Macau would definitely be, because they were, Marina Bay Sands being the most iconic and Venetian being the first, are something that uh, are there to behold. Uh, I think Galaxy, upcoming Galaxy in a couple of years, with an addition of an arena and probably another 4,000 rooms, probably somewhere around eight to 9,000 hotel rooms will definitely be one of the top three. Um, if you go to Las Vegas, perhaps Bellagio or perhaps Venetian. Bellagio because of its fountain, because of its centrality, because of its gorgeous, you know, the, the overall experience and Venetian because of, again, beautiful property uh, as well as you know, being located right next to Palazzo, that's 7,000 hotel rooms, and also having this huge um, exhibition center right next to it, that uh, convention center next to it. That's a very, very large, uh, potentially a nice IR. If you go back in time, 
If this was the early 90s or late 80s, I would definitely include Mirage uh, as one of the IRs. But it's, been, it's past this time, and I would not consider that an, an IR anymore. Uh, definitely not uh, one of the top IRs. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, isn't Mirage an IR now? Well, uh, let me give you an example. Mirage is 31 years old. Uh, it's not what it used to be. There are those twin towers in Malaysia that until 1998, they were the tallest buildings in the world. They're now ranked 17th or 18th the last time I looked. They're no longer among the top skyscrapers or you must see it. Are they skyscrapers? Yes, they are. Mirage was an IR. It was the IR for quite some time. But now it's aged and there's so many places around it, so many more beautiful places like an iClub, which used to be it and now it's no longer where the cool people go. And IR also has its time. Some are far more timeless, like a Marina Bay Sands will take decades until it would lose its status to, I don't know, I don't even know what. But some places like a Las Vegas strip, uh, strip, you know, the competition is so tough that you may be no longer be the coolest place in 10, 15 years. So it had its run, it's fantastic. Is it an IR? Yes, it used to be a cool IR, a top IR, but is it really an IR now? Uh, not sure. All right, great, excellent. Well, Aladad, this was a very stimulating discussion and again, incredible insights you're providing our audience. So thank you so much for your time and I look forward to talking to you again next month. Thank you, look forward to it as well. And if you enjoyed this segment, make sure to drop us a comment on the comment box below. We have provided links to Sigma's virtual expo featuring Aladad in the notes section, so make sure to pop that open and we'll see you in the next video.